Hi guys, this is the first video in the BB-8 build. Uh, I'm going to try, I don't know how far I'm going to get, but I'm going to try and build a BB-8. Now, at the very least, it's going to be a static display model with some flashy lights or some, you know, some lights and bits and pieces. But hopefully, if I can get it all sorted, uh, he's going to be radio controlled. He will at the very minimum have um, lights, sound, um, articulated head, and if I can get the mechanics right, he'll be able to roam around as well. Um, so we'll see. Um, at the moment what I'm doing is trying to make something as accurately as possible. I did get some bits and pieces um, and started making a rough, very crude knock-up, which I'll sh I shall show you some bits and pieces. Um, but I've bought a 3D printer not just for BB-8 but for my modeling in general the model builds I do um, but I'm also quite interested in moving into the, the droid building uh, because the the accuracy of the parts as you can see from that drawing are superb so now a lot of the stuff I will have to design the insides but um, Things like this, for example, this is the first part of the head. Um, this is going to be, uh, or rather, this is this is from some um, CAD files that uh, I'm able to access via the BB-8 Builders Club. Um, so that's going to be one third of his head. Now, this is my first pre 3D printed pieces. Now, this this was in two halves. Well, the the antenna was in two halves and this pie section was also in two halves um, you see they were I've glued it together all I actually did is I, I it, the part comes with some holes either side to either side so I just used some cocktail sticks and made some little pegs and, and pinned it as I glued it to give it some additional strength but the and I've rubbed I've just sort of sanded it down primed it and painted it but um, it really does mean with a 3d printer uh, you can do some superbly accurate bar, uh, parts. And this is obviously the the ring at the top there with one of the antennas in place um, and there's another piece out in the shed which I'm uh, currently working on so I'll, I'll show you that as well actually um, but this is the, uh, the really cool bit so far uh, that's going to be the next really cool bit I just hope that's going to come out right. ABS is quite difficult to get it to stick down because it, as it cools it warps and it lifts and I've had a few unsuccessful prints as you can see in there so it's a bit of a learning curve but I'm enjoying it um, so we'll see how it goes this was the earlier mock-up I told you about it's just a 300 millimeter acrylic dome and a 500 millimeter polystyrene ball at the moment but uh, some of the technology that they use in the real BB-8 well I say the real BB-8 the one in the film was actually a puppet but afterwards um, they've created a fully working um, radio controlled version um, so if I move if I get rid of that head for a second that was just literally a, a mock-up prototype that I did but you can see this is my attempt at the pie bit you can see how much more accurate you can do it with a 3D printer. Uh, mine was too big anyway, but it gives you an idea how much better the parts will be. Uh, now the head will float. I don't know if I can show you this with one hand. But if we break this in two, I've got a super strong magnet there and a super strong magnet there. And basically, to, if you cut down all the really complicated electronics and radio control and gyroscopes and balancing and all the rest of it the head basically is just a magnet running a, it's just on magnets effectively um, so anyway we'll see how far I can get with it might be a little bit too adventurous I don't know but what I'm going to do now is I'll uh, head out to the shed because that's where I've got another piece that I'm working on. This one, by the way, is going to be R2-D2, but 
that's for another video for another day. This is the other part that I've 3D printed today. This was printed in one piece. Uh, it's the bit that goes in the middle of that. I'm not going to lay it on there at the moment because it's the primer is still wet so I'm just priming it and sanding it to hide the rings a little bit because you do see the the rings in a 3D print you can see them near the centre there so I'm just sort of building it up with primer sanding it off, building it up, sanding it off uh, until it's not too noticeable but there's no way I could mark out and etch those lines that accurately without doing it this way I don't think so So there we go anyway um, that's it for now I'll um, update you as the progress uh, goes, as the build goes and uh, let's see how far we can take this thing this is uh, the first section of the head, or the dome. Um, now I've had problems, I've only actually had the printer about three days, I'm still learning, but I've learned enough already to know the difference between printing PLA and printing ABS. ABS I'm really struggling with getting it to actually stick down to the bed. I've increased the temperature to the, te the temperature of the bed to 100 degrees C, um, the materials printing at about 220, 230, something like that. Um, but I've had, as you can see, one, two, three failed prints so far. Um, and I just woke up and I just caught it in time. This one also was starting to lift. Now, I don't know if it's because I've got it near the edge here and the temperature's not quite so good at the edge. But I've found that I can, I hope, rescue it with the clamps they just clear the carriage of the head as it goes through um, so if anyone else is trying this and having trouble I thought I'd share this I've actually used from the first one I had nothing on the print bed to hold it down um, probably the first two I think that's true to say on the last one I used a trick that is out there on the the internet I used some uh, stronghold hairspray uh, the glue stick doesn't really help well it hasn't helped for me so far unless I just haven't had a, haven't put enough on um, but um, yeah so at the moment this is just a very very hot print bed with hairspray and clamps where it just where the edge is starting to peel up as it cools um, clamps are just, I'm, I'm hoping, are going to save this one. Fourth time lucky, but um, we'll see. Here's a little bit more on BB-8 build. Uh, I may have shown you this in an earlier video, but these are all pretty 3D printed parts. Two parts back to back for the antenna. Uh, two parts for the what they call the pie section, which is the silver bit, and then one part for the dome which afterwards has to be cleaned up and you have to fit it. I was lucky my centerpiece warped ever so slightly but uh, it, it's fine, it fitted fine. So quite pleased with that, especially as I've only had a 3D printer for, what, three days, four days now? So that's not too bad and that is this bit on his head, the pie and the, the circle. Um, so it's that bit there really. See if I can do a little bit of optical trickery here. So yeah, so it's that bit. Although it needs to focus, you get the idea. So, 3D printers busy whirring away. Um, the next bit of BB-8. Now I've had four unsuccessful shots at uh, making part of his dome. Uh, this is ABS. ABS is notoriously hard to 3D print, apparently. Uh, so I'm told, and so I've discovered. Uh, the problem is it warps as it cools. So the nozzle temperature is 255 degrees C, roughly, and the print bed, the piece of glass that it sits on, is about 100. Deg uh, sorry, yeah, it's about 100 degrees C. And what happens is as it cools, you can see that end, the, this right-hand end, started to peel up, it just lifts away from the glass and turns up as it cools and then the whole thing goes skew if and that's what that's what happened there during the middle of the night. So um, reluctantly I've started another one but this time I'm using different 
filament. I'm using PLA this time. Now PLA is, is very good, it's good for the environment, it's biodegradable, so if I ever get tired of BB-8 in the future and decide to recycle him, it's all recyclable. Um, it will decompose in a, not in under normal situations, although dampness apparently, and damp and heat will make it um, biodegrade, uh, but apparently if it's, if it's put into, a, into a, a professional composter, then it will, it will um, biodegrade properly. So it's, uh, I think it's a derivative of corn I was reading, it's actually a, a plant derivative. So anyway, um, now the reason for using it is because it's so much more forgiving. Uh, the temperatures don't have to be half as high as they do for ABS and there's less shrink, because the temperatures aren't so high, I assume that's why, um, as it cools there's less warpage, there's less shrinkage, so it retains its shape better. Um, and this is actually quite a nice texture I'm getting on that. Whoops. So I'm quite pleased with that. It's slow. There's like 28 hours remaining, apparently. Although that's a bit like Microsoft time when you're transferring files. It changes and recalculates based on the current file that's being moved. It's a large one. It, the time goes up. It was a small one. The time goes down. So with this, what you found, or what I found, is when it's printing the base, which is a much wider piece, wider flat piece, the time goes up and up and up. But when it gets to the wall, because it's just a thin section it's doing now, the time remaining is going down quite quickly. So hopefully it won't be the full 28 hours. But um, And then if that's still on, yeah, so that's the piece I'm making. Um, I was having trouble doing the the dome in thirds, so I've done them, I've chosen to do them in quarters, so there's going to be four of these instead of three, but it means smaller print, quicker print, less time in the printer, less likely to warp, I figured, so I hope that's the case. Anyway, so that's it for now, uh, there's going to be tons more to come, lots of stuff to 3D print, I'm going to work on the radio control, the, the, um, the mechanics of how it's going to work inside, whether or not he's going to roll along or just have a bit of head and animatronic type features, I don't know, but um, we shall see, we shall see, but um, it's good fun. Anyway, I'll come back to you uh, another time with an update. Hi all, this is the um, first real video on another project I'm going to be working on. Um, it's this little fella, except for it's not going to be a little fella, it's going to be a full size, one to one scale, RC radio controlled replica. Um, at the very least he's going to you know, move his head around and light up and speak. If I can get the mechanics to work, I'm going to go for a you know, fully radio controlled one that's going to roll around and, and move around on his own, but that's, mm, that, that's, that's going to be hard work. The, uh, the head, the rest of it is quite easy to do, um, but as you can see I've already started experimenting with some electronics here, um, sound cards and bits and pieces, um, and this incredible little machine is my 3D printer that I've bought, so I can uh, make some really cool parts. This is part of the side of BB-8's head or dome. So we're going to have some really good quality stuff hopefully goes into it. Um, I've joined the uh, BB-8 Builders Club uh, and actually the R2 Builders Club. I'm going to try and make them both at some point. Um, so anyway, that's the um, just the first little sort of idea. Uh, I'll show you a couple of bits and pieces that I've made already. Um, so yeah, let's do that first. Okay, my <clears throat> my poor house is turning into a, a model workshop unfortunately. This is the, uh, the X-Wing that I had a series of videos on which is now um, sold and waiting for 
customer to come and pick it up. The Falcon you'll know about from my Falcon series builds. Um, and looky here, we've got lots of bits and pieces for droids. Um, I've already made a start on R2's body framework and got some resin parts. Um, things like the arms that are going to open. Uh, we've got power couplings, the vents, we've got <clears throat> the hollow projectors, which sort of go together, something like that, and they'll they can move. Um, so there's a few bits and pieces here. We've got some RC stuff and I'm starting to get together. Um, and here we've got some BB-8 parts. Well, actually, that's that's another bit of R2, R2's eye, resin part again. Um, now, this was the first 3D print I did of BB's head. It came out pretty well. <clears throat> now, there's two sets of files um, that you can get from the BB-8 Builders Club, um, depending on the size of the 3D printer. Now, I printed this because I was having trouble getting my first few prints to stick to the, to the print bed. Um, if you use ABS, for example, it tends to shrink as it cools so it warps and it sort of pulls off the bed and you, you end up getting a lot of failed prints. So this is PLA which is completely biodegradable in the future. If I ever throw these parts out they can all be uh, properly uh, recycled or biodegraded if that's the right word. Um, this is the top of his head, the pie section as they call it and then the, uh, the dome. We've got one of the antennas on which fits something like that. But then I decided, because there was a little imperfection on the bottom here where I've started to fill it and flatten it, um, I thought, no, I'm going to do it again. And this time we'll go for the, the larger pieces. So this is one third of his head, which again, 3D printed part out of PLA. Um, and then other bits and pieces. This is very close. It's not right. It's very close. This is 100 mil diameter. Uh, I've actually ordered some plastic, um, they're Christmas tree baubles, they're 80, 80 millimetres or 8 centimetres in diameter and they come in two halves and you can open them up and put bits and pieces in and then you hang them on the Christmas tree. But it just so happens that they make a perfect eye for BB. This one's slightly too big, so uh, the 80 mil ones when they get here, they're going to be perfect. So, it's begun. Um, the models that I've been building, I'm still going to be doing models, I've got, uh, in fact the, the customers bought the X-Wing here, uh, I did the custom stand for it, uh, he wants me to build two more so I think he wants me to build him a Voyager and a Defiant at some point, um, so that'll be doing, so I'll be doing the, the, the models in between, but I'll also be doing a bit of droid building, um, big learning curve, in lots of ways, the electronics, um, these two are going to be radio controlled, uh, they're going to have some movement, they're going to turn heads, they're going to, you know, turn their heads, <laughs> not turn other people's heads, although they might do that as well, hopefully. Um, and I've got some uh, pre-recorded sounds that I've also uh, started processing. Um, for example, I've got them on my phone at the moment, but... So we've got... Uh, Lots of sounds for R2, and I've also got uh, lots of sounds for um, BB-8 as well. These are the ones that would be have been effectively copied from the um, Spiro toy. Um, but there's some other very good ringtones that you can get. Um, wait, just see if I can show you ringtones with the sounds. And again, if I can copy these, I might be able to use them and trigger them re uh, via remote control. Uh, da -da -da, where's sounds gone? There's sounds. So if we look at, for example, the text tones, so we've got some BB-8 ones down here. So we've got... So, uh, so we've got all of those that we can use for um, for the droids. So, um, just starting to get everything together and starting to get an idea of how to do it. Um, if anyone's serious about building these uh, droids, obviously 
all you've got to do uh, look up the uh, astromech.net uh, there's the R2D2 Builders Club and there's the BB-8 Builders Club um, you can basically you can join and all the STL files for the 3D printers and the plans and the PDFs and the blueprints and everything are all free you can just download them but there are some there are some club rules um, you know you're not allowed to I can't for example start printing these by the hundred and start selling them off they'll very very quickly throw me out um, and that would ruin it for everyone else in the club you're not allowed to do that obviously Lucas Arts and uh, sorry George Lucas is um, Lucas film and uh, obviously Disney would be uh, all over people if they started doing that so that's a that's a no-no you're allowed to help people build their own uh, you can build you can print things for people as long as and you're going to ask you're you're allowed to ask a little bit to cover uh, you, you printing costs basically stuff like that uh, but there's absolutely no way you can start making a production line of these things it would be a big big no no um, but as I say it's free to join so you can you can join and, and do your own and there's people there who will print stuff for you etc so uh, it's very very good they've, they've done an excellent job with you know the drawings of 3d CAD files for these it's just fantastic this needs a little bit soothing uh, smoothing sorry you can see if I can get it I don't know if you can see actually in the light you can just see the grain in this um, where it's been printed but uh, what I've got to do is is effectively glue the three parts together um, the drawing comes with little holes in there so you can peg it uh, and make quite a good bond if you use ABS, obviously you can chemically weld it with acetone. Um, but this is PLA, which you can use um, CA or super glue cyanoacrylate on, um, and you can use a sort of paste version, gel version of it, uh, which will help get nice seams down here. So, anyway, just a little bit of a sneak peek um, of what you can do, or what I might, or I'm going to try and do. <coughs> I wonder if I can show you this. This is interesting. Uh, that little blue thing is just a very cheap £12, I think it cost me, a uh, USB speaker. So if I now go to the phone and go into music and I go to my where I've made my little folders of sound effects. That's now coming out of there. Which all you've got to do is put that in a dome and you've sort of half got the effect. So anyway, that's it for now. Uh, I'll um, do a little bit more, uh, probably before I finish this video, show you a little bit more progress um, and um, come back to you soon. Okay, this is uh, part of the BB-8 build. So far, I've uh, been doing quite a bit of laser, uh, laser printing, um, 3D printing. Sorry, I was thinking about I was thinking about R2D2's dome head, uh, which is laser cut, which is why I said laser printed. Anyway, 3D printed. And what I've done at the moment is I've got the first two thirds of the head. And what I'm doing, what I'm waiting, uh, is I'm printing up the base, the the, uh, the the ring underneath his head, that's sort of like a, a cone shape, and it, that's the bit that floats over the body. So there's going to be uh, three pieces to make the ring, then there's a platform, uh, and another ring, and then this, and I'm building it from the bottom of the head upwards. Uh, what I'm doing at the moment, while I'm still printing the other bits and pieces, is I'm just, uh, although this is really good, I don't know if you can see, the quality there, it's a really good print I've got, there's a few little imperfections uh, and I'm just sort of building up the top of that where it uh, didn't, didn't go too straight and just filling in some of the lines um, so I can sand it all smooth. I'm not going to worry too much because there's going to be more sanding to do when 
I get to that bit when I start to join them together because the, uh, the joints are going to have to be very well hidden. Um, so it's really just a bit of prep, a little bit of putty, just like you do for the other models. Um, and I'm just layering it up there very slowly. But what I am doing is I'm making sure that I don't block any of these lines and keeping all these like these little grooves nice and clear between between the sections. Um, and what I'm doing on these bits, where it prints the top of the the data port, there's a little bit there where uh, because I printed it without any support structure, uh, it didn't go quite straight. So I'm just using a little bit of putty and I'm using some little sculpting tools. And I'm just layering a bit of putty inside in. I'm just building it back up, building up that top edge again so I can then file it flat later on and it won't have. At the moment it's got a little bit of a, a sort of bevel which it shouldn't have. So the idea is just to build that back up, putting a little bit of putty on the inside and some on the outside as well, just on that edge. And I'm just going to build that up so it's nice and square again. If you're doing the uh, 3D printed parts, basically you have an option, you have a choice. Do you go for quick parts, which need a lot of prep afterwards, or a lot of um, you know, uh, cleaning, filing, sanding, building up, getting rid of the imperfections, etc. Or you can, and this is what I've got at the moment, there's, there's basically there's three settings on my printer. Uh, which is like a very quick print, a normal print, or a very high quality print. And as you can probably guess already, the quick print is going to be low quality. The high quality print is going to be really slow. Because it was taking about 20 to 24 hours to print these. Um, if you do it on the highest setting, it's almost double that. If you do it on the lowest setting, it's half that. Um, so it's a bit of a trade-off between speed and quality. Now I'm set in normal the normal profile is what I'm using, so idea being that it's it's going to be a nice compromise between speed and quality. That's what I'm. That's the plan anyway. And so far, it's not too bad. I've got a I've got another little piece. I've done the head bit already, but that's going to be held on by little magnets, so I can get my hand in there to do the LEDs and do the electronics, turn the switch on. Because unless I do a Bluetooth link between the head and body, obviously there's no connection between the two. Um, so that connection has to be wireless, uh, unless you run them as two totally separate items. But uh, uh, we'll see how that goes. But you, you still need access. And there's some little, little holes here, which I initially thought were for putting a peg through so you can glue things together like they've done here. You've got holes here for pegging the two pieces together to give you some strength. Uh, or to give you some more strength, I should say. But um, no, I was wrong about these. These are actually for little tiny magnets, and then you put the same ones in the top half, and then you can just pop the lid on, and it'll hold, and take it off to gain access later on. So I've actually got to fill these back up because they should be recesses, not holes. So I've got to fill these back up on this side, um, so I can put magnets in. So. Um, it's very easy to get carried away on this actually and just get started and get carried away with this 3D printing because it's really good. It's really good fun, it's amazing to watch the pieces build up. But um, I did notice yesterday I found out it is worth thinking, it is worth stopping, slowing down and just reading the instructions because there's a lot of guys in the BB8 building club that have done this before, they've been doing it a while and they've learned a lot. So rather than just getting carried away and going for it, it is better to sit down and read the, the instructions that they've done and they can advise you on the best ways to go about it. Like for example, the head printing from the bottom up instead of the top down. I think that's going to help with getting things, everything lined up. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we've got some information there, so do use it. But um, I just thought I'd show you the progress so far. It's very early on into this build, but uh, the 3D printer gives me the confidence to to know that I can make some really good quality parts, and it's going to look the you know it's going to look the part. So um, there we go. I'll um, catch up with you a bit later.
Okay, so I've done some initial sanding. Let me just put the light on for you. It's a bit dark in here. Okay, I've done some initial sanding, and what I've done is just put a couple of coats of coats of primer on, which will do a couple of things. Uh, one, it'll help when I paint it white. It will help these lines stay nice and dark and accentuated. Um, and the other thing it will do is it will help me build up a nice smooth surface because uh, as you may have seen if you saw a close up earlier, the 3D print leaves some very, very fine lines. Um, if you've got it set on quick print, it leaves some big, big, quite big lines, but um, the higher the quality, the less work there is to do afterwards, basically, but the slower the print. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm going to do the same again now, rub it all down, smooth it off with sandpaper, put a bit more putty wherever it's needed, uh, smooth it down, prime it again, a few more layers, and then just keep rinsing and repeating that, basically, until I get a really nice, uh, really nice look on it. And that gives you an idea. It's not sitting flat at the moment, but uh, obviously at, at, at a later stage, when I get all three, they'll be sealed together and hopefully look pretty good. So that's it for now. I'll see you later. This is a bit of a BB-8 build. This is the dome skirt that sits at the bottom of the head and the bit that floats over the body. Um, <clears throat> I'm waiting for some CA gel to come um, for most of the joints, but in the meantime I've just used um, some 5 minute epoxy to do these joints. I've got a nice, dry, strong, solid joint. It's nice and flat. The only hard work is cleaning up the joints afterwards. Um, there's a lot of rubbing down to do. I've done quite a bit of that one. That one's not looking too bad. So it's just a case of rubbing down the excess blue, then a little bit of filler, primer filler, that sort of thing, and rub it down until it's all nice and perfect really. So there you go, that's uh, the first three parts actually stuck together for the, um, the dome skirt. Catch up with the BB-8 build. Um, got a few bits and pieces printed here, obviously you've got the two halves of the head, top of the head. That's the right diameter to make the eye, it just needs cutting down at the back. Well, that's uh, basically what they use, 80mm clear sphere. That was a nice little print, that's come out very well. That's 3D printed and just uh, a little bit of paint. And that's the hollow projector. Um, and then we've got the PSI, which I think is basically this, this which is the speech light, pops on when he makes a noise. And that's got a bulb in there already, or LED in there. And that's the fitting that will go behind. There's a lens to print to put in there. Logic displays, which will be lit up. Uh, this is all part of the inside neck arrangement inside the sphere because the head will tilt and rotate. Um, so uh, that's those bits and I'll come back and show you some more. This is going to be a third of the base of the head. Uh, the dome plate I think is its correct title. That's what's that got? It's got another three hours to go. It's going to look like show you. It's going to look like that. There's three of those. And there's more bits and pieces in the shed which I can show you in a moment. Okay, just a few more bits and pieces going on. This is uh, an LED which I've glued into the back of the... Uh, it's a little fitting that will hold the LED in the centre of the um, hollow projector on BB-8. And speaking of BB-8, this is the I think it's dry now. This is the three sections that make up the uh, the skirt. It's called the dome skirt. It goes underneath the head. You recognise it probably at that angle. It's a bit that floats on top of the the body. That's the front. You can recognise the front and back because there's a raised section at, at the front and at the back. There's nothing at the sides. They're the same all the way around. And that's how you know which way it's orientated. So. Um, tried to make those joins almost well as hidden well hidden as possible it needs a few more coats of paint but I think I'm getting there they're not too obvious on the outside doesn't matter on the inside 
and I mustn't glue that yet because I'm going to be gluing to it later so I want it to glue to the material not the paint so getting there more soon